So here I am at the beach. I'm at a place, uh, not really a beach, it's pretty much a rocky outcropping. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> we got caves here, it's pretty cool. Got waves and all that stuff. And uh, I was just sitting here and I was just praying and I was thinking about just how great my God is, how great our God is for those of us believers. And I was reading Psalm chapter 89. In Psalm chapter 89, the psalmist writes about how great God is, how powerful He is, and just reminds us of how uh, magnificent God is and how much bigger He is to the things that we see in life. And then in verse 9, chapter 89 of Psalms, verse 9, he says, God, you rule the ocean and you subdue the storm-tossed waves. Man, when I look right here and I see these waves, you know, even though it looks really nice to go in the dip, it's hot. I don't want to get in those waves and get dashed upon those rocks right there. I don't, I don't want that to happen to me. Those waves are pretty powerful. And I hope you've ever been on a boat in the ocean in the middle of a storm, but it's not a really nice place to be. You know, the psalmist reminds us that God subdues the ocean. The ocean is so magnificent. Look at how far you can... Your eyes can't even see how far the ocean is. 70% of the earth is covered with water. As a matter of fact, the ocean controls a lot of the climate and what happens on the land. There's a lot of energy and a lot of power in the ocean. And this is just the Pacific Ocean that I'm looking at. There are multiple oceans all around the world. And that's a lot of power. There's so much life, so much activity that's happening in the ocean that we don't even know about. And the psalmist says, God, you created that ocean and as wild as it can get in an instant, you can subdue it because you rule over it. Even the ocean will submit to God. So it makes me wonder about my life and our lives. Are we fully submitted to God? Maybe we say, God, you know, I, I submit to you. I, I love you. I, you. You're my savior. But have we made him our Lord? Have we made Jesus our Lord? Are we really submissive to his direction for our lives? Even the ocean will submit to God. How much more should we submit to him as his children? I don't know. Maybe you may be going through a storm or going through a hardship. And, and there's real hardships that we have. There's no doubt. You know, financial hardships you know, uh, physical issues, relationship issues, and we need direction. And then there, there's times that we can hear news that could be scary and the world goes through so much turmoil. But the psalmist reminds us of the majesty of our creator and just how great and how powerful he is. And even in his greatness and his magnificence and his power and his authority and his rule, and that the whole world submits and kneels to him that he wants to walk with us. He wants to walk with me and you and, and he wants to direct us, but it requires us making a choice to submit and surrender to him. God, I surrender to you. Not necessarily surrendering my own way, but surrendering my insecurities, surrendering my fears, my deepest concerns, my worries. Have you surrendered that to God? Because God is reminding you that he's powerful. That he's greater than what's the matter. That he could take that test you're going through and flip it into a testimony. But he wants you to surrender. He wants me to surrender to him. So listen, don't, don't go through life talking about God and not really surrendering to him. What are your fears? What keeps you up at night? What, what keeps you worried? What are the stressors in your life? You have to consciously make a decision to surrender. I know it's more powerful for us when we actually speak something to God. And, you know, God is listening. Even though God is the ruler of the heavens and the earth and everything in between, he's interested in what's going on in your life. And he wants us to talk to him about it. Surrender to him. So let's do that today. He's listening. Will you speak? At this moment, just take some time. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to talk. Just take some time. 
and let's just spend that quiet time with God. And begin to think about what is it in your life? What burden are you carrying? What hardship are you going through right now? Think about that right now. And then in your heart, just give it to God. Say, God, I surrender this illness. I surrender this individual. I surrender this relationship. I surrender these finances, this hardship, this problem. I surrender it to you. And let God minister to you right now. Let's just have that moment at, right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We recognize your greatness today. We recognize your power. We recognize that you have placed us here on this earth. This earth that you created, that you put on its axis and spun it around in a, a wonderful balance. Lord, we thank you, God. That, Lord, you created every living thing. The mountains, the valleys, and the oceans. And you created us, Lord, to be in your will. So, Lord, we're reminded in Psalms 89 about how great you really are, how powerful you are. And we're reminded that even the oceans, you rule over them and they submit to you. God, you rule in our lives. May we not do anything without your direction. May you guide us. We know that you desire to. But, Lord, as you do guide us, Lord, may we follow you. And not live in fear, not live in insecurity, but recognizing that the ruler of the heavens and the earth is directing us and we're walking together as a team. Thank you, Lord, for your greatness. And yet, even in your greatness, your intimacy with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.